Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. How many dads do I have in the house this morning? If you're a dad, lift your hand up in the air. Can we give it up for our dads this morning? Come on. I love it, love it, love it. Well, let me tell you, dads, you guys, honestly, honestly, regardless of what the world thinks, regardless of people's opinion, regardless of what the devil has said to you, dad, let me tell you something. You're God's hero. You mean the world to God. You mean so much to God that he was willing to give his very best in order to save us, deliver us, and to give us this amazing mantle of fatherhood. And so whatever you've been through, whatever you're going through, wherever you've been, I want you to know that God is the God who makes a way where there is no way. I want you to know that today God wants you to know the height, the depths, the lengths of his unconditional love that literally can change your life and compel you to be the man that God's called you to be. Not just any man, to be a, a man of God, to be a, a, a man with purpose, a man who is actually living by God's original design for your life, which is to be a wild man. Can I just, can I just give God a big shout one more time for our Heavenly Father and just say thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and for every single father. Go ahead and be seated. Awesome. You can't have church if you don't have the smell of exhaust. Come on. Huh? Today, ladies, this is a man's cave. And, 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 you, and you were invited. You were welcome. You guys can hang out with us. But, uh, but every man's cave should smell like gasoline. Praise God. If you're watching on live stream, you should have came to church. You missed it. But, uh, yeah, after service, we'll be giving rights to everybody in church and uh, bring the kids, take pictures. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Let me give you the definition of wild man. Look at this on screen. What's a wild man? <clears throat> God's definition is a man that is uncontrolled, unrestrained in faith, in love, in peace, in joy, and pursuance of God, returning to his original design. That's, that's God's definition of a wild man. And I want you to know, fathers, that God has, has created a mechanism inside of us that has the spirit of adventure, the, the spirit of, 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 of fortitude, the spirit of fight the good fight of faith. As a matter of fact, God has given every single father the position of captain of his battleship. Now, I don't know what your battleship is. Right now, maybe you're single. Well, guess what? Your battleship is right here, your church. Maybe you're married. Your battleship is your family. But whatever position God has given you, God wants us as fathers to take the role and the responsibility of God's battleship. You know, when you think about battleships as you see these screens, um, a captain on any USS battleship must understand that when the ship is under attack, Whenever you, my friend, are under attack, whenever your family is under attack, whenever your church is under attack, whenever a cell phone is trying to attack the church, <laughs> where it doesn't belong, <laughs> listen, the greatest danger of being God's battleship is being too close to the shore and then finding yourself running in to being grounded on the sand of the beach. Do you realize that a battleship was never created, was never designed to just be parked at the bay shore and just look pretty? No, every single battleship, every single man was designed by God not to be comfortable at the shores where it's safe. We were designed to be in the depths of the things of God. And when you think about these battleships, let me tell you something. When they go out to, 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 to the depths of the ocean, they're ready for war at any moment, at any time. And that takes every single one of us understanding that we are the captain of our battleship. Every single one of you. You know, I make fun with my kids and everything. And I'm like, I know my son one day will get married. My daughter one day will get married and, and everything. And I said, you know, your spouse, you know, like, for example, Alexis. I'm like, that's fine. Your, your husband will be the captain of your home but he'll be captain junior and i will be <laughs> captain senior because i will always be the captain 
of my family, of my children, even Isaac, Captain Junior, for the rest of your life. Sorry, bud. <laughs> <laughs> and so dads, I believe that every single one of us, if, as, as these pictures are going, we have all been shipwrecked at some time. Every single one of you. You've been shipwrecked in your faith. And ladies, this goes to you too. Maybe you're a single mom and you're just trying to, you know, play both roles, your mom and your dad. Or maybe you're a single dad and you're trying to play both roles, mom and dad. But every single one of you, including myself, we have all been shipwrecked in our faith at some point of this journey, this walk that we have with God. Every single one of us have been shipwrecked. However, every say however, and this is not a but. Let me tell you something. This is what I've learned in 22 years of walking with God. I have learned that every disruption offers an opportunity for advancement. Every disruption, maybe right now your worship is being disrupted. Maybe, maybe you're, and when I say your, your worship, I'm not talking about that worship. I'm talking about your worship. Your worship, your worship unto God is being disrupted. Maybe you're being disrupted by, by piles of debt. Maybe you're being disrupted by piles of, of, of family issues and, and drama and pain. But let me tell you something. With every single disruption, God will always offer an opportunity for advancement. Every single time that I have been in the darkest places of my life as a father. And let me tell you something. I have been there as a dad. I have been in places in my life. Life where I felt like, man, that my kids are a little cray-cray right now, and it just seems a little chaotic, even though I got some great kids. Let me tell you, they love Jesus, but I've been in seasons and moments in my life where I just feel this, this tension and this, this, this chaos and, and this, this wrecking of stuff that happens, but, but God has been faithful. He's been my anchor that has kept me every step of the way, and I want you to know, Dad, that obviously you have made it because you've made it this far so far. You're here by the grace of God. And so every single disruption, maybe something's disrupting your intimacy with God. Maybe something's disrupting your, your relationship with family. Maybe something's disrupting your purpose, your call. What's disrupting you? What has kept you in the place of mud? What mud is keeping you down? I'll say it this way. What sin is weighing you down? What sin is keeping you on shore instead of being in the depths where you were designed and created to be? What is holding you back from being everything that God has called you to be? I want to stir the men up this morning. I want every single father to, to have a, a, a spirit of fight on the inside of them. But we also need a man next to us. Man, when I'm down, it's, it's awesome when I can get a man of faith that can pick me up when I'm down. That's what we're here to do today. We're here to lift you up, pick you up, but we're also here to bring conviction and hopefully inspiration of the Holy Spirit for transformation. Are you here today? Okay, so what do I do, Pastor? How do I get off of the mud? How do I, man, if my ship has been buried in the sand, how do I get out of this mud? Come on, what's your mud? Mud of fear? Mud of sin? Mud of doubt? What mud are you just stuck in? What are you stuck in? Disappointment? Have you ever been disappointed, Dad? Huh? Disappointed with your kids? Come on, disappointed with your family? Disappointed with your life? Come on, you're looking at yourself right now. Man, you're getting older and, and nothing's happening the way you wanted it to happen and you're just stuck in the mud. What do I do? How do I get out of that? Well, it's very simple. I'll just say it this way. Well... Captain, <laughs> you got to make a decision. You got to make a personal decision to want to move forward. You have to make a personal decision to want to literally get off the place of being buried and allow the Holy Spirit who brings resurrection life bring you out of that place and put you back in the place that God designed you to be. Everybody say kedge. We need to go from mud to catch off. Here's what I want. Clear it up, mm. man up, mm. 
at the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to go from mud to catch off. Catch off. That's the new cuss word in church. Catch <laughs> off. What's catch off? Look at the description of catch off. Catch off is a sailing term for getting off the mud. Everybody say, get off the mud. Come on, you got to get off the mud. You got to take personal responsibility and get off the mud. Get off the sand. Get off the rock. God did not create you. God did not design you to stay stuck in the mud. That's not what God created his kids to be like. You were created to be ashore. You were created to be out in the open. You were created to be God's battleship. We weren't created to be comfortable, sitting back, relaxing, doing nothing, watching, watching our world fall apart. And listen, maybe you don't have a, a, a global vision, but let me tell you something. Do you have a family vision? Because that, 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 that there alone... Man, if I can just change my family, I can change my block. If I can change my block, I can change my city. If I can change my city, I can change my state. If I can change my state, we can change some nations. We got to come to that place. I mean, we don't serve a small God. We serve a big God. We, we serve a God of war, and the Lord is his name. That's what the scripture says. He is a God of war. And the Lord is his name. So the next time you think about the name of the Lord, you just start shouting war. There's a time of peace. There's a time of war. Come on, man. Maybe you're at that place right now where you got to start declaring some war on some stuff. Come on. It's time for us to catch off. Catch off. What does that mean? In other words, if, if I'm in the sand, you're grounded. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to be grounded. I, I like to, I mean, do your kids like to be grounded? No, they don't like it. They want to, they rebel from being grounded. We got to have a spirit of, a righteous spirit of rebellion when it comes to being grounded. You got to fight not to be grounded. You got to push not to be grounded. It takes guts to take responsibility as the captain of your battleship. No guts, no glory. No guts, no glory. It has to take courage for you as God's man to say, you know what? I'm going to move this glorious ship. What's your glorious ship? For, for me, my glorious ship are my kids because that's the only legacy I can leave behind on this earth. That's my glorious ship right here. This boy right here and my girl somewhere around here. That, that's, that's my glorious ship. I, I got I to gotta leave something behind. I got to leave a mark in this world so that my kids and my kids' kids and my kids' kids' kids and the kids to the kids' 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 kids and they all will be in the zone when God needs them to go to war. We need to be those kind of people. No guts, no glory. And so we need to go from the place of, of, of unstucking ourselves from the mud to emerging. Everybody say emerging. Come on, God wants us to emerge. He wants us to emerge, not just emerge quietly. He wants us to emerge victoriously and when you emerge victoriously there's a shout on the inside when God declares war he doesn't declare it with a whisper he declares it with a shout and everything on earth responds to the shout of heaven let me prove it to you you ready in Judges chapter 5 quickly I'm running out of time already Judges chapter 5 look at this here to kind of paint the picture the children of Israel man they are on the shores they are in the mud. They are in trouble. And God, your heavenly daddy, my daddy, your daddy, all right, he's looking down. He's always watching over you and me. Do you know that God watches over us whether we're in a good place, in a bad place, whether you're in tip-top shape or whether you're just so destructive? Do you know that your heavenly father cares about you, loves you, 
pursues you regardless of your, your, your status quo. He always goes after you because he loves you. Aren't you glad that because you had, you had breath in these lungs that you have a heavenly father who doesn't just wait for Father's Day to think about dad, but he's thinking about you, dad, every single day. Every day he's trying to woo you. Every day he's coming in with his roar and he's saying, come on, dad, get on. We're gonna, we got places to go. We got things to do. Come on, there are things that God has planned and designed for your life but we got to respond and so right here you're going to see in Judges chapter 5 you see that that the the children of Israel the people of God they're stuck in the mud because they have like 600 plus chariots man are surrounding them and they're making them feel like you're not getting out of this one you're not coming out you're staying right here have you ever felt that way have you ever felt that way in your life where you just feel like, I don't see a way out of this situation? Have you ever been so just bogged down with debt? You don't even know how I'm going to pay all this debt. Come on, you got, you got more debt than you do life on this earth. And you're so, you're so just piled up with so much financial stress and you're so you're so in debt to to maybe even some some mud or we'll just define it as some sin thing sinful thing you don't have to be immoral to be in sin you can just be flat out disobedient and be in sin and so God has an issue when the enemy is coming up against his people God is not cool with you and I being afflicted or attacked by the enemy however he will allow it in order for you to have a a wonderful opportunity to step up to the plate and be the man that God has called you and I to be God wants us to step up God wants you to step up God wants you to step up God wants every single one of us men to step up you ready for Judges 5 all right here we go Judges 5 God is declaring war. That's the whole context of this. So he declares war. And in Judges 5.2, here's what it says. It says, and when, and when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. You know what? When you read this verse, I can only imagine when God's declaring war, he didn't have to beg people to get involved. You know, sometimes you got to plead with people just to get connected, get involved. You know what's so sad in today's culture, and every church does it, and we're, 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 we're victim, victims of it as well. The Church of America has to do these push notifications. These push notifications are these, 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 these virtual texts that go out to your phone and remind you to go to church. Why? Because we got to plead with the United States of America body of Christ to come to church. And it is so sad because when God is declaring war, this is not time to just be like, I want to sleep in lay because it's cloudy. Ooh, it's so good. The the comfort, the the pillow. Come on, don't let the spirit of pillow get the best of you. Huh? Come on, don't don't, don't let the, the spirit of comforter, okay, get the best of you because you know what? This isn't a time for comfort. This is a time for war. God is declaring war. He's declaring war to sin. He's declaring war to depression. He's declaring war to fear. He's declaring war to a a drug addiction, alcohol addiction. He is declaring war to anything that's trying to keep you from being out in the deep with him. Huh? Come on, Presbyterian Church. Let me hear you today. Yeah. Let me hear the men roar. One, two, three. That's right, ladies, and don't you dare forget that. (laughs) Judges 5, 4, look at this. Look at this. So God declares war. Men, listen to me, please. Uh, It don't matter if the ladies get it, but you got to get this. uh, But ladies are awesome. They're going to get it. But this is for men right now, for this little moment right now. And then I'll get back to you, ladies. Listen. So God declares war, and in verse 4, he says this. When you, Lord, everybody say, when you, Lord. Okay, check this out. Went from Seir, when you marched from the land of Edom. So let me just, let me stop right there. I'm sorry. Uh, Who went ahead of them? Let me say this again. Who went ahead of them? So let me tell you something. This is now for everyone. Any place you're in right now, 
any dark place you've ever been and any place you'll ever be in that will be very dark, the Lord has already gone before you. The Lord has already been there. The Lord has already done that. The Lord has already dealt with that. The question is, is do you believe that the Lord has already been where you're at right now at this moment? That's the question. Do you have the faith? Do you have the capacity to believe your heavenly father when you're in that darkest place of life? Do you honestly believe that the Lord has already been there, done that, and conquered that in Jesus' name? He said, I conquered death, hell, and the grave. I've already been there, done that. I, he even got you the t-shirt. Victory. And so he says, so the Lord went out. And look at this. And it says, and the Lord marched. Well, we need to get men to start marching again. He marched. He marched. Come on, let's get a marching sound in here. Just stomp your feet on the ground quickly, everybody. Come on, help me out. We're, we're going we're gonna to preach together today. That's a weak march. Come on, march. Put some juice into it. Yeah. Come on, okay, you can stop that. See, listen, God marched. That's, that's what the sound of victory sounds like before you ever get the victory. You got to march. So it says, and the Lord marched. He marched from the land of Edom, and the earth shook. The heavens pour. Look at this. Look at this. When the Lord goes before you, things happen. Look. It says, and the land of the earth shook, the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water, the mountains quaked before the Lord, and the one of Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. In other words, here's what he's saying. The earth, when, when it heard the voice of the Father say, I'm declaring war on those that are Declaring war on my people, I declare war on them. And you know what happens? The Bible says that all creation responded. The earth responded to the very declaration that God made. And you know what the earth did? It did what? It shook. You know why? Can you imagine being out in the battlefield and you're running with your, with your gear, your sword, your gun, whatever, your bazooka, and then all of a sudden it's shaking and you, what's going to happen to you? You're going to fall. Right? So God, God, God just made a declaration, and the earth, the, all of creation responds. The earth said, I'm going to shake this thing up, then I'm going to get in on this. I'm in the fight. So the earth starts doing this. And then all the soldiers were falling, right? But then the scripture says that not only did the earth begin to shake, but it says the heavens poured. The heavens poured. What does that mean? What, is, what does it mean when the heavens poured? That means that the heavens said, you know what? Man, if the earth is going to shake, man, I'm going to pour out the dew and I'm going to pour out the fog because I'm going to blind the enemy. The enemy is going to be blinded. When they're trying to run into battle, they're not going to be able to see because the dew will be so wet and the fog will be so thick. They won't know from left to right, from back to forward. They're going to be so completely just consumed with this fog, they won't be able to see it. But then he says, but then the clouds said, well, if they're in the fight, I want to fight, and maybe I may not be able to, to be able to be someone that shakes things up, or maybe I'm not someone that can create fog or, or even create dew, but one thing I can muster up, I can muster up some rain, some water, and I will go ahead and drench the enemy and its chariots so that when I create so much water that the chariot's wheels will be so stuck. They'll be so stuck in the mud. You see, what God is saying to you and I, he'll say, the very sin that was trying to take you out, I will take out the sin that tried to destroy you. Amen. Come on, Jesus, will. he said, I took every sin. And, 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 and the enemy who, who tried to take you out, the enemy who tried to expose you and condemn you and shame you and put you in a place of guilt, God is declaring war to that place in your life too. And he's saying, I will rain down water and I will get the same devil that has been tempting you and I'll get him stuck in the mud. How about that? Oh, but then the mountains, because the verse did say all these, right? The mountains said, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute, what y'all doing? How, I want a piece of this. I, I want in. And, and the mountain said, you know what? I don't, I don't have water, and I can't do any, any, you know, any shaky-do stuff. I, I, can't, I can't even create dew or even fog. But what I could do, go ahead, Mr. Earth, you shake, and I will make sure that my rock in my mountain will crumble so that any enemy that tries to hide in any of my caves, we will crush them. Think about it. God declares war, and everything that God created responds. 
Where's the church? Where are the men? Why aren't we responding? The Bible says this. He says that if you don't worship me, the rocks will praise me. I mean, that's how deep God is. He's so deep, he says, hey, listen, that's okay. You want to come in church and act like you're all that in a bag of tortillas, bag of chips, wherever you're from, I don't know, American, Mexican, whatever, or a bag of fried, I don't know, whatever. But I'm telling you this right now. You, you, you have to realize that when you're not willing to give everything of you to him, the rocks will. And I don't know about you, man, but I ain't letting no rock steal my praise. I, I can't let rock take the place or the position of captain of my life. A rock? Are you serious? Is a rock, is a cloud going to take your place? Is, a, is, is the earth going to take your, is, is the mountain going to take? Last time I checked, God said, you say to that mountain, be removed, and it has to obey you. That means that God is saying, when you respond to my declaration of war, let me tell you something, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that I am Lord, but he needs you and me. He needs you. He needs you. Huh, I love this. Come on. Judges 5, verse 20 and 21. Let's finish this up. Come on, wrap it up. Look at this. It gets even juicier. It says from the heavens. Look at this. From where? Yes. Dang, look at this. From the heavens, the, the, the stars fought. What the? From the heavens, the stars fought. What the heck? The stars fought. How does a star fight? Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, I created every single star, and I have not only numbered them, but named them. I named the stars. And the stars, they heard it. They said, dang, what's going on all that down there? We're, we're in the fight too. Do you see from every direction, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, man, every Thing that God created responded and said, don't you dare leave me out. Don't you, I ain't begging to get in, man. I'm telling you, I'm pleading to get me in this fight. And the stars, look at that, they fought. From their courses, they fought against uh, Sisera. And then the river Kishon swept them away. The age-old river. Everybody say, age-old. Age say old. old. Say really old. really old. Come on, there's some old and really old people in church. No, no, please stay with me right now, okay? Stay, stay with me. Let, let me go ahead and just back it up a little bit. Let's put this baby on reverse. The stars fought. How does the star fight? The star fought because back in those times, the only way people were able to determine their destination was by reading the star. The star is what led, I mean, who led the people to Jesus in Bethlehem? the star come on you've all heard the christmas story who led the people to jesus the star. the star led the people to jesus so the star said oh i want some action and the star said okay i'm looking right now fly but i'm gonna go ahead and turn it this way and then the enemy is gonna think they gotta go that way but really what the star was saying i'm gonna change their destination i'm gonna change their direction and what's gonna end up happening to them is we're gonna ambush them and then the river, look at that. Then the river Kishon swept them away. The age-old river. Please, for some of you dads and you moms too that are already old. And you know how I know you're old? Because old people like to declare they're old. How you doing? Oh, my hip hurts. <laughs> how you doing? My, oh, my back hurts. Oh, how you doing? Oh, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Uh, listen, watch what you say because what's coming out of your mouth is what you're declaring for you. Yeah, I'm sick. I, 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 I'm broke. I'm busted. Uh, hey, old people just, they always make excuses for why they don't, they don't serve. I mean, when did you ever hear about Christian retirement? When that happened? I, I hear Christians all the time. I, I did my time, son. And, and you know, and I'm not afraid to look at them and be like, Pfft. What, you did? No, did, no, listen, do you want to go home to be with Jesus? Because then you did your time. But, but while you're on this earth and while you're breathing, stop making the excuses of I've already did my kingdom time as if you were in prison or something. Man, the kingdom is all about freedom. It's not about being capacitated or, or being in prison. It's about being free because whom the sun sets free is free indeed until the very end. We can't just sit by neutral 
relaxed, comfortable. Come on, we can't just be sitting back with our hands in our pocket. Even the river of Kishon said, what? The stars are in? The earth is in? The mountains are in? The clouds are in? The heavens in? Even the stars got a little, you know, piece of this action. And the river said, oh, you know what? I don't have all their talent. I don't have all their giftings. I'm not that smart either, but guess you know what? We know what I can do. (laughs) Oh, I know how to well up some water, and I know how to stir these rivers to have some rapids. And when the army of the enemies of God walk through those rivers, we will go ahead and take them from underfoot, and we will wash them dead. Listen, God knows exactly where you're at, but God knows exactly what he needs to do for you. The question is, is will you respond as the Lord has declared war? He's waiting for you and I. What is it with the earth responded, but the people of God don't? We're just watching, just praise the Lord, complaining. There's that, they're, they just rode on a motorcycle, praise God. Oh, that's, that, this ain't no church. <laughs> this is wrong. You can't ride a motorcycle in a church. What the heck, man? What do you mean? What? We're caught up on the motorcycle when there's souls that are dying and going to hell, and you're more concerned about a bike riding it inside of a building? Well, let me tell you something. The presence of God is not in the structure of this facility. The presence of God is in the frame of your life. That's where the presence of God is. And every time you and I walk in this place, the presence of God is here. Amen? Amen. And then we all need to get in alignment with him. And then we got some deep presence of God. And that's when lives are changed. And so the river said, I'm in. Come on, God said, everything I have created responds to me. And he's saying, where is the church? Mothers need to respond. Fathers need to respond. Children need to respond. Come on, God has declared war from heaven. We're not here just to sit back, relax. Jesus says it this way. He gives a a description in Matthew 20 of Christians and believers and, and what they're doing right now. He's talking to the disciples and he says, man, we have a problem with men. God, listen, men, if this is, is condemning you, that's you. But if this is convicting you, that's God. God said, I declare war on your shame. Look, Matthew 20, verse 1 through 7. This is Jesus in the red, okay, so don't get offended at me. Ready? For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers. He hired what? He hired what? He hired what? Jesus is describing you. He said, I hired, I, I called workers. I called, I hired workers. This is Jesus. If you want clear interpretation, Jesus is basically telling them what the, he said, this is what the kingdom is like. This is what heaven is like. I, I, I hire workers. Aren't you, you got to get to the, to the revelation that you're God's employee. You're not only his child, but you work for daddy and he pays with great dividends. I mean, he's, he'll bless you. Come on, daddy will take good care of you. Daddy will promote you. Daddy, daddy will provide for you. Daddy, daddy, but daddy just needs a child can, that can obey a little bit, huh? And, and look what he says. And so for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. Come on, for his heaven. He's hired us for his kingdom. He hired us for his purposes. Come on, so many of us are so selfish. It's all about us. It's all about me. Come on, it's consumed me, 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 me. And look, in verse 3. And about the nine in the morning, he went out and he saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. I'm sorry. I know it's a cuss word in church, but let's say it all together. Ready? Doing nothing. Verse 4, he told them, are you crazy? No, he didn't say that. He told them, you also, listen, you also, look at this, no shame. He saw them doing what? Nothing. He didn't get on them. He just said, hey, listen, you also. Go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever's right. How many know that when you work for God, God pays back? He'll pay, he'll pay back. He'll bless you. When you choose to forgive someone, God pays you back. When you choose to serve him, when you choose to trust him, he pays you back. Verse 5, so they went. Come on, he declared, go work. He, they went. He said, go do this. They went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon, and he did the same thing. Come on, you've been coming every single Sunday, some of you, not all of you. It's very rare to get people to come to church four times a week. The average American goes to church twice a month. 
That's the average American stat in America, twice a month. Okay, so he came at every different hour looking for someone that maybe, maybe you didn't get this last year, but maybe you already connected this year. Come on, maybe you didn't get it last weekend, but right now you're just like, oh me, oh my, he's talking to me now. Not me, him, right? And so God's come out every single weekend trying to talk to the church, saying, come on, church, and then none, none move, some do. Then he comes back again because his grace and his mercies are fresh in you every morning, and he tells you again, and he says, go to work, and you're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and you don't go to work, <laughs> right? Or you, or you come like, man, that was so inspiring, but nothing changes. I'm not here to inspire you. I'm here to move you. I'm here to catch off. Catch off. Life is hard. Get over it. It ain't easy. It's difficult. It's challenged. It's filled with disappointments. It's filled with setbacks. It's filled with depression. Oh, what? He, did he just declared depression? No, I'm telling you what God declares war on because there is a church that is filled with depressed people. Depressed. Depression is a real thing. I get it. PTSD is a real thing. I get it. But God wants to heal that depressed state. Jesus didn't die to do a half job. Jesus died to do the whole thing. He heals. When he declares, and by my stripes, you are healed, that was a declaration. When God speaks a word, everything responds. You got to start looking at your body and say, God said, be healed in the name of Jesus by his stripes, and that body has to respond at some point. But do you believe that declaration? Verse 7. Because no one has hired us, they responded. Look at this. They answered, he said to them, you also go and work. In other words, he was saying, hey, uh, why aren't you guys working? They're like, well, you know, it's because it's because we got family at home. It's because we got kids. It's because, listen, everyone always has an excuse for a why. Everybody does. But I want you to know that God doesn't take excuses. God makes declarations. And you either catch off or you stay in mud. Are you hearing me? And dads, let me tell you something, please. I want to encourage you for a second. Your best opportunities come out of chaos and failure. I have failed as a dad plenty of times. Right, Isaac? Yeah, he won't even answer. Smart kid. <laughs> tell him, he's like, <laughs> he's like was that, is that a trick question, dad? Have I failed as a dad? Yes. yes. Let me show my failures in the house. Just wave your hand. We've all failed. Come on, don't pretend. Don't be religious like, well, I don't fail, praise the Lord. I'm a born again. No, you, we, we've all failed. We've all been in chaos. Let me see all my chaotic people. Come on, come on. We've all been in chaos. Come on, your soul is in chaos. Come on, dysfunctional, destructive even sometimes. But how long will you allow that to be your excuse to keep staying stuck in the mud? How long? Huh? And Jesus says, get to work. Don't stand around being idle. Don't stand around with your hands in your pocket doing nothing all day long. God says, this is what the kingdom is like. My men are at war. My captains are catching off. That's what God says about every single one of us. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.